Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 10. We are kicking things off this morning from the neighborhood, where I have spent the last couple of days plugging away at our Gigacorp SU-1 storage facility project. And as you can see by this pretty jazzy cinematic camera swooping replay mod introduction thingamajiggy, we're making some good progress on the storage facility. In fact, I think today we can get this thing to 90% complete, which is very exciting because we've got a lot more work to do on the server. We got our deeds last episode and we've got to make beacons and a lot of them and soon. So yes, we're about to get extremely busy over the next couple of weeks, everybody. Which is precisely why we've spent so much time sorting out storage. I want to get organized pretty early on this season so that we can start working on bigger and more complex projects without having to go digging around our various chess monsters. And that's exactly what we've achieved here, guys. Uh, during live stream and for the last couple of mornings, I have finally catalogued our storage facility into a, a system that is going to work well for myself. I think storage facilities are very personal and you need to get them set up in the way that best works for you. And the way that I've done this is by color coding and separating all of our items into three major categories. Number one, preparation. So when we prepare to go in, into the world to like, go explore or go build a project, everything that we might need for the preparation side of things is in here. Food, fuel, ender pearls, uh, diamonds and things. Oh, and by the way, I went end busting with Iskull and Stress Monster. We got a bunch of tasty loot out of that. We'll talk a little bit more about that at some other point. Uh, but yes, we've got tools over here too, and all the things that, uh, from armor to tools and weapons to uh, bits and bobs that we might need for crafting. Lighting over here, enchanting, etc, etc. So we come into the blue room to prep for a project or an adventure. We go into the green room for organics, where we can get all of the building blocks that we need for any projects that we're working on. And uh, I've also done something interesting with the wood over here. Instead of categorizing wood into different wood types, we now categorize wood into dark wood, light wood, and nether wood. So any wood that is, you know, dark goes here. Any wood that, you know, is light goes here. But yes, don't want to go into too many details about exactly how the storage system is laid out. You guys uh, should probably figure that out for your own personal usage if you want to do something like this. But on this side, we've got some other stuff. This is dye. This is honey. This is bone, which is all mob drops. Uh, this is mob heads, which is kind of interesting to collect. And this is decorations. Um, like stalactites and corals and whatnot. And last on the list is the orange room, of course, where we are storing our blocks via category rather than block type. So all deep slate in here, all stone in here, all non-stone in here, etc, etc. And over the course of the last few days and during a live stream earlier this week, we managed to pretty much empty out every single chess monster in the land that we own and uh, we've put it all into storage now. So gone is this chess monster, gone is the Bry chess monster, gone are all the chess monsters in fact, and they're all inside storage, which is absolutely fantastic. And yes, by the way, we have upgraded our transport system from feet to ender pearls. <laughs> and uh, that's because the wonderful iJevan has recently completed the Enderman farm for us, and uh, I've been spending quite a lot of time out there collecting a bunch of Ender Pearls, collecting a bunch of levels too, and I even managed to make us a full set of Mending Efficiency 5 tools, as well as upgrading all of our God golden armor to Mending, and uh, yeah, we now have a nice juicy set of Mending everything, basically, and ready to get stuck into some pretty serious projects on the server. Starting with, of course, finishing off this hangar bay, and uh, then getting to work on a wither skeleton skull uh, farm, which we're going to need to make so that we can make beacons for our beacon shop. First things first, I think, let's finish the hangar bay and then we'll uh, tackle making a wither skeleton skull farm. Yay! Hey, yo, in the pill set.
And there we have it, my fellow exoplanet explorers. The Gigacorp SU-1 hangar bay has been completed. Or at least the outside structure of it has been completed. Still need to figure out a few things about this build though. Number one, what's the hangar bay for? I guess the original idea for this is that this is a module you would install on a planet that you've just landed on that will give you everything that you need. So you could store stuff and have access to all the vital things that you need to explore the planet. And this is kind of a garage for your vehicles, I suppose, that you, you would use to traverse across the land. Although I haven't figured out any vehicles per se, but maybe that is a good idea for this. And of course, let's do a quick view check from within the Giga Hut. I wanted to make sure that the hangar bay was in viewing distance of our little house here. That looks super cool from outside the window. And as we wake up in the morning to go and explore the planet, there the hangar bay is waiting for us. We can gain access to, I suppose, our planetary vehicles which will be stored in the garage over there I, I i guess i i don't know how to make little vehicles i oh man i i think i might need to ask my community to help me out with uh, designing some some vehicles we can stick in there also we need to deal with this giant space over here this is going to become a command center for the module i think the lore of this structure matches up with the command center quite nicely uh, the idea being, of course, that when you land on a planet, this will be the first thing that you build. And you need to have some sort of a command center so that you can talk to Gigacorp HQ somewhere else in the Gigaverse, right? So, yes, in there, I'm thinking we make a command center. And we've got a couple of villages back here that we've been using to generate courts for this build. These fellas could potentially become the engineers uh, within the command center, right? We could move them in there and um, set them up at computer stations and things like this. I wanna try get a view from the hangar bay from a different angle here, just to make sure that it is looking sweet from wherever we look. I'm thinking let's go up into Azumavoid's bedroom <laughs> and take a look from up here. Oh man, actually that looks really awesome. I love the uh, the little blue details on the side there, right? That blue concrete. Of course, we're sticking to the Gigacore palette of blue, white, uh, black or brown and orange. And yeah, from here, that is looking sweet. It definitely looks like we've got some sort of exoplanet colony thing going on. Oh, I'm so happy with that, guys. It's come out so brilliantly. I love it so much. And uh, very glad that we now have a storage system working because in this episode, we're going to be starting our next major project, which I am kind of nervous about. We're going to be heading into the nether to find the, sp the perfect spot to make a wither skeleton farm so that we can get a bunch of wither skeleton heads so that we can start making beacons, which of course is our hermit permit. And I know that a ton of hermits want to get some beacons going and they're going to be a hot commodity over the next couple of weeks. So if we want to start making some diamonds, we need to start making some beacons. But to make some beacons, we have to start doing some killing of the wither and wither skeletons. And these are not things that I normally do. However, I'm kind of excited about this because hermit permits are making me do things in Minecraft that I have never done before. And you know what? That's actually kind of awesome and I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, there is something though that I wanna get sorted with you guys before we do that. Before I forget, while we're talking about Gigacorp lore and all of that stuff, we need to go get the block at 000. And now that we've got Silk Touch tools, we should be able to get down there um, without a problem and yoink the block at 00, hopefully without any issues. Right, we're almost there. Although I think I might have calculated this incorrectly. I don't think this column is 000. In fact, I think this column is 000. This is X030 right here where we're standing. So I think three blocks down from here is going to be the 000 line. So we're gonna go down one more to zero one. That's gonna be here, which means that zero 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 is this block over there, right? If I'm calculating this correctly, that is a granite block. And we don't want to mix that up with other granite blocks. So I'm thinking we need to get rid of these granite blocks in the inventory, I guess. We get rid of this, get a shulker box out. That's going to be a giga box that will hold the 000 block. And hopefully... I've done this correctly. When we go down into this space, we should be at 000, which means this block is 000. No granite in the inventory. Nope. And yoink. There it is. That is the 000 block of the Hermacraft Season 10 server. 
And we'll end up doing something about this with the Gigacorp storyline. I, guys, I still need to figure it out, okay? Full disclosure, let's break the fourth wall real quick. I haven't figured the story out yet. Give me a few weeks. But we've got the 000 block, and now we can do something with the storyline around the that block. Also just realized that we've made a death trap, because anybody coming from the end that doesn't have a bed is going to spawn up there and splatterate down here. So... Before we upset any hermits, let's fill in this hole, fix Hypno's lawn, and go and stick the uh, zero zero block nice and safely in the SU-1 hangar bay. <laughs> ooh, ooh, just realized we get to use our storage facility now. And also looks like there's a block missing over here, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to show you guys how this works. So, we come back from an adventure, we've got stuff to store. Most importantly, we have the zero zero block to score, store, so I think we'll put that in our valuables area. Uh, that's going to be right over there. We shall store that until further use. Whole bunch of building blocks and stuff to be stored here. So into orange we go and we find the spot for stone. We'll find the spot for diorite, which is up here. Uh, we'll find the spot for gravel, which is here. Deep slate goes on this side. Uh, process deep slate will go in here. And ores and whatnot will go. I think I don't have a spot for ores, although I think we'll just do unprocessed ores like this. Unprocessed fuels go here. Unprocessed copper goes here. Mob drops will go in biologicals on this side. And uh, where are the mob drops? He, uh, the bone block. There we go. I'm still getting my head around all of this. We'll drop some of that phantom membrane in there. Perfect. And what else have we got? Levers. Well, levers go in redstone in the preparation module. And uh, those are uh, components, so those will go in the redstone components box. And that, my dear friends, is a very quick look at how the storage module functions. Uh, like a glove, like a dream, I would say, and it is a very welcome addition to our Gigacore base over here. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, I need to go have some real-life lunch. I am absolutely starving. Next up... We're going to the nether and blowing a hole in the bedrock roof because I know exactly how to do that. I definitely know what I'm doing. Absolutely. East girl. Excuse me, Brendog. East girl. Are you trying to sound like vintage beef? <laughs> is, that, is, that how, is that how vintage beef says this girl? East girl. Uh, I am going to go and try and make a hole in the bedrock, which is something that I've never done. Oh my goodness, Ren. Yep. It is the way I know about that I don't know if it exists anymore. Does it involve pistons and minecarts? No, no, that's, it's actually kind of easy from what I can tell. So this apparently oh. is how you open holes in the nether. You have to find a spot that's just one bedrock, right? Yeah. Classic, yep. Classic. 127. This will be okay. obsidian. Yep. Uh, this is TNT. That's TNT, yep. This is netherrack or whatever. This is... This is, is a... this from above? This is from above. Yeah, now this is the bedrock floor down here, right? Okay, yeah. This is the other TNT. Then you put yourself under here. Yep. Oh, no, no. Hold on. There's a mistake. I need a piston. Then there has to be a piston here too. This is a piston facing up. The TNT goes on top of the piston like so. Okay. Okay. Then the lever is over here. Then you lever hit. There, yeah. You flick. The, you go under here. You flick the lever, and then you right click on the top right hand side of the obsidian block with another piston as fast as possible. And yeah, when the TNT the explodes, like I don't, I, I don't un understand what happens. It just. Well, you, when you're breaking off the piston head, is is what happens, right? Well, Ren, bring a bring a respawn anchor and good luck. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I should probably take blast protection also, right? I'll probably just explode TNT. Uh, probably, I mean, you're supposed to be protected by that obsidian block. I would just bring a respawn anchor. It's you know. I've man, there's a lot of first times for everything in, in this episode. I've never, I don't think I've made a respawn anchor before. Isn't that hard to make? Don't you need like fancy I'm, stuff like uh, with the bits and stuff? You need a uh, crying obsidian and a glowstone. I mean, I, I'm sure I'll be fine. If I explode, I'll come, I'll come and beg you for a crying obsidian. Well, at that, uh, that time it would be too late. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, have fun. Good luck. 
Yeah. I shall see you. Uh, I shall see you running from your house to the Nether portal again. <laughs> yeah. If well, I'll come straight to you for the for the uh, the respawn anchor if I die. So be prepared. So, my dear viewers, theoretically, this is everything that we need to make a hole in the roof of the Nether. <laughs> well, we still have to get to the location where we're going to be making the hole, but. I'm pretty confident that this method is going to work. I want to say a big shout out to Sassy Fish on YouTube. I watched their tutorial and it was a very uh, easy to follow tutorial. And from what I could tell, it works really well. I tested it a few times on the test server. It seemed to work. And I guess we get to do that for the first time ever. I've never made a hole in the nether roof in Minecraft before. So this is the first time. Also, we get to use our elytra together for the first time also. Uh, picked this elytra up with Stress and Iskal on an adventure into the end um, a few days ago. And wow, this feels kind of weird. <laughs> First time flying. I don't think I'll be doing a lot of flying. Um, if I can help it, I'm still enjoying being quite close to the ground. But for this particular task, uh, I think an elytra is going to be very helpful because we need to go to uh, approximately 1800 on the X in the nether to find the spot that we need to make our... Um, our hole in the roof. Luckily, our portal takes us to the roof already so that we don't have to worry too much about that. We just have to make sh sure we head in the correct direction. We need to go east about 1,800 blocks um, and that'll find us the spot. Now, what we're trying to do here is we are trying to find a nether fortress that is situated within a soul sand biome. Now, I know we've got a nether fortress close to our world spawn, and it probably would be quite good for the for a wither skeleton farm as it is in a soul sand biome. However, I think for this particular venture, we're going to go and make this farm in our own fortress because, of course, this is going to be supplying goods for our beacon store. And uh, we want to make sure that, you know, we can say that the beacons have been created by ourselves that we made everything from scratch and that the beacons are going to be worth the uh, the amount of diamonds that we asked for them. So that is what I'm thinking. Uh, we're going to find ourselves a fortress. I, I've been looking around this morning. I think I found a good one. And it is at 1746 on the X, which is over here, and minus 11 on the Y, uh, which is a little bit in this direction. Now, I could be completely wrong here. I'm not using free cam, so it's going to be difficult to validate if this is the correct block but i'm pretty sure this is the one 1746 minus 11 uh on the test server below this block of bedrock there is just um netherrack so that will get us down to the surface quite quickly and if i understand how this system works um i think we should be able to do this relatively fast oh wait a minute this the obsidian's in the wrong place we need to put the obsidian next to the block that we want to move next to the bedrock block that we want to move so Obsidian goes here. This is the block we're trying to move here. So this is where the piston goes with a bit of TNT on it. Bit of netherrack like a so. And also a trapdoor here and another bit of TNT there. And then the actual trigger for the thing goes there. You know what? We're not taking any chances. I don't want to lose all my stuff. This is all of my best stuff in the game so far. So that would be absolutely tragic. We're going to throw it all the way over here. Th that'll definitely be fine. Okay, here we go. First attempt. We got to spam right click that button real fast after we start the TNT trigger and get that piston placed. Here we go. We hit this and spam the button. Oh, did that work? I think that worked. If the piston is facing this way up, I think that actually worked. Wait, did we nail that first time? I actually hurt my hand doing that. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I spammed that freaking right mouse button like nobody's business let's have a look did that work <gasps> it worked yes oh that's so fantastic oh that is amazing okay so that is actually a great joy in my heart right now guys excellent so it looks like i found the correct coordinates also because not all bedrock is um open like this right most bedrock comes with another bit of bedrock below it this is a lovely little spot for us to uh, to have because there's there's just netherrack under this. We should be able to just dig all the way down here and eventually open up into a big open bit of nether. And maybe we can do it like this, right? And there is some soul sand there. Okay, I'm getting a little bit nervous now. I don't generally like coming into the nether that much. 
if I can help it. <laughs> uh, although we do have some excellent armor on right now, but it's the fall damage that I'm worried about. Um, and we should be able to... There we go. Okay, perfect. So, yep, 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 yep. That's lined up perfectly, just like it is on the test server. So there we go. There is the crossroad of the nether portal or the, the, the nether fortress that we're, we want to come and raid. There is a little nether skeleton already waiting. And, of course, we're going to have to prepare this entire fortress uh, before we even make our skeleton farm. We have to come here and put buttons over the whole fortress to maximize spawning. So we've still got quite a lot to do in this project. All right, this is looking pretty good. The crossroad looks excellent. The entire fortress is in the soul sand biome. Not too happy about seeing some uh, blazes and some ghast action over here, though. I must say that's not great news, but I think this is a problem that we will solve another day. Uh, for now, just wanted to get down there and uh, secure the position for us. That is where our wither skeleton farm is going to go. And I suppose we should probably make some sort of a pillar over here too so that we can find it easily and I should have come with a bow I don't have any of the materials I have nothing to make this actually <laughs> I was so nervous about even just getting down there guys but I'm so glad that it that it worked I don't even think we took any damage from that either uh fantastic well I'll tell you what guys I'm gonna come and probably get this whole thing prepped on stream tonight and so that in the next episode um we can start working on our with us with a skeleton farm and I hope to get it done so that we can start working on our beacon shop uh, as fast as possible. For now, I need to get myself back home, which I think is uh, in this direction. Yeah, I, I guess we can make an arrow here for ourselves also, right? This is how we go home. Uh, here we go. Arrow that way. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get myself home, get some editing done, and oh man, I'm actually really excited about making it with a skeleton farm. I've never done it before. It's gonna be cool, and it's gonna be highly profitable, hopefully. Thanks for watching, everybody. Rendigated Dog signing out for now. We'll see you back in the nether in the next episode.